Xia Dynasty, which is believed to be the first ever dynasty in Chinese history. This period is shrouded in mystery and debate, with some scholars arguing that it might just be a myth, while others believe it really existed. So picture this, we're talking about a time way back, around 2070 to 1600 BCE. The Xia dynasty is said to have been the very first government in China to implement the idea of dynastic succession, where the rule passes from one generation to the next within a family. This was a big deal because it set the stage for how Chinese history would unfold for centuries to come. For a long time, people thought the Xia dynasty was just a legend, something that later Chinese historians made up. But in the 20th century, archaeologists started digging up sites that matched the descriptions found in those old accounts. This discovery threw a wrench in the hole, it's just a myth theory, and the debate started heating up. The Xia dynasty eventually fell, replaced by the Shang dynasty around 1600 BC, which was more concrete in terms of historical evidence. And later, the Zhou dynasty came along, taking over from the Shang. But here's where things get interesting. Some folks believe that the Zhou and the dynasties that followed wanted to show that earlier rulers had lost their right to rule because they were corrupt or immoral. So they might have created the story of the Xia dynasty as a kind of cautionary tale, a warning of what happens when rulers go bad. But, as much as some scholars stick to this idea, the physical evidence unearthed by archaeologists makes it harder to dismiss the Xia as just a fairy tale. Now, let's talk about how the Xia supposedly came to power. According to historians like Shima Qian, who lived around 145 to 86 BC, there was this great leader known as the Yellow Emperor, or Huangdi. He was more than just a ruler. He was a cultural hero who brought order to the chaos of prehistoric China, supposedly around 2697 to 2597 BC. The Yellow Emperor is credited with creating Chinese culture, developing silk production, instituting laws, and even making advances in medicine and agriculture. After his death, he was buried in a mausoleum in Shanxi province, which is still a tourist spot today. The Yellow Emperor was succeeded by his grandson Zhuangshu, one of the legendary five emperors who founded the Xia tribe. They were tough and resourceful, eventually defeating their rivals and establishing what we now call the Xia dynasty under the rule of Emperor Yao. Yao was no ordinary ruler, he was a philosopher king who cared deeply for his people. He oversaw the construction of grand palaces and watched as small villages of huts transformed into bustling urban centers. But not everything was smooth sailing during Yao's reign. One of the biggest challenges he faced was controlling the floods of the Yellow River. These floods weren't just a minor inconvenience, they destroyed crops, drowned entire communities, and displaced countless people. Yao tasked a man named Gun, who was almost seen as a demigod, to stop the flooding. Gun struggled for nine long years, trying everything he could think of, including building dikes. But the floods were relentless, and the dikes eventually collapsed, leading to even more destruction. By this time, Yao had passed on his rule to his successor, Yu Shun, who was not happy with Gun's failure. Depending on which version of the story you believe, Gun either took his own life, was imprisoned, or chose to exile himself to the mountains. After Gun was out of the picture, Shun turned to Gun's son, you to finish the job and finally bring the flooding under control. And now, unlike his father, Gun, who tried and failed to control the raging floods, you approached the problem with a different mindset. Instead of battling the water head on, you realized that he needed to work with nature, not against it. He learned from his father's mistakes, understanding that tackling such a massive challenge required more than just brute force or solitary effort. You rallied the surrounding tribes and led them in constructing a network of canals. These canals didn't try to stop the water but rather guided it gently toward the sea. This ingenious approach allowed the rivers to flow more naturally, reducing the risk of flooding. But this wasn't an overnight success. Yu's project took a whopping 13 years to complete. 
and during all that time, he never once allowed himself the comfort of visiting home, even when he passed by it three times. His dedication was so intense that he refused to rest, even as his wife and son called out to him. He believed that until the flooding was under control, he had no right to relax, knowing that so many others had lost everything to the waters. Yu's relentless commitment inspired everyone around him. His determination became the driving force that kept his workers motivated until, finally, the flooding was brought under control. The people were safe, and the land was secure. Impressed by Yu's success, Emperor Shun placed him in command of the army. Yu didn't disappoint. He led his forces against the San Mao tribe, who had been a constant threat to the Xia people, and he decisively defeated them, securing the borders. Yu's achievements earned him the title, Yu the Great, and he became the natural choice to succeed Shun as the next ruler. When Yu eventually took the throne, his reign marked the official beginning of the Xia dynasty. But Yu wasn't just a hero for his military and engineering feats. He also established a stable central government and reorganized the country into nine provinces, making it easier to govern such a vast territory. Yu ruled wisely for 45 years. On his deathbed, he made a decision that would set a precedent for future generations. He named his son, Qi, as his successor. Initially, Yu hadn't wanted to burden Qi with the responsibilities of rule. But the people's love for Qi, rooted in the story of his father's dedication, made it clear that he was the right choice. And with that, the tradition of dynastic succession in China truly began. But not all of Yu's descendants lived up to his legacy. Qi's son, Tai Kang, turned out to be a poor ruler, and while some of Qi's other successors were more competent, the dynasty gradually began to decline. One of the standout rulers after Qi was Shao Kang, a legendary hero who revitalized the country. But by the time Kong Jia took the throne, things had taken a turn for the worse. Kong Jia was more interested in drinking than ruling, and his lack of leadership paved the way for a series of weak rulers. The last Xia Emperor, Jia, became infamous as a tyrant, eventually losing the Mandate of Heaven, the divine right to rule. His downfall came at the hands of Tang, who overthrew him and established the Shang Dynasty. Now, for a long time, people thought much of this story was just that, a story, a piece of mythology rather than history. From the 1920s to the 1960s, many scholars believed that the Xia Dynasty was a fictional creation, possibly invented by historians like Shima Qian to explain the idea of the dynastic cycle. According to this view, Shima might have created the Xia as a model to show how rulers could lose their right to govern if they became corrupt or failed to rule justly. However, in the 1960s and 1970s, new archaeological discoveries began to challenge this mythological interpretation. Excavations uncovered palaces and four-walled homes that seemed to match the descriptions of Xia structures found in ancient texts. While no written records have definitively identified these sites as belonging to the Xia dynasty, the evidence has made it harder to dismiss the Xia as mere legend. The debate continues, with some scholars still skeptical, but others increasingly convinced that the Xia dynasty may have been more than just a political invention, it might have been a real chapter in the long and complex history of China.